So as promised, I did all 500 piece puzzles of my collection, but I also told you guys because I was without my laptop for two weeks that I'm going to combine the two videos for today. So I basically wanted to do the competition puzzles in a separate video to, you know, completely dissect it and compare the times and all of that. So I'm not going to be doing that. So I basically just combined everything together in one video because I'm not going to have time to do two videos before leaving to Spain because I'm going in five days. So. How exciting! But anyway, I don't think there's much point in me talking too much, but I think it's time to just see the results now. The first puzzle I did was by Educa, and the title of this one is Colourful Donuts. I was honestly really looking forward to doing this puzzle because it's just so bright and colourful and you know, I thought, oh it's gonna be really easy because all of the donuts are separated, so it's basically like doing a lot of small puzzles. Well, let's just say it didn't go as expected. <laughs> so, what made this puzzle really difficult is basically like normally when you puzzle, the less pieces you have left, the easier it becomes. But with this puzzle, that was not the case because all of the donuts were separate anyway. So obviously the yellow and the blue donuts were the easiest because there's only two of them and they each have different confetti on them. I think it's called confetti. <laughs> but then when I got to the green, the red and the pink ones, it was really bad. Like it took me so long to finish the puzzle and I honestly wasn't enjoying it that much. What I've learned with Educa so far is basically they have all ribbon grid cut pieces but they have few exceptions where there's like pieces that don't interlock with each other. So that's the only thing that really helped with this puzzle. So definitely not a good speed run. And also my camera stopped recording and I didn't notice because I was so close to finishing that I just didn't hear that it stopped beeping. So yeah, oopsie. So 1 hour 33 minutes for this puzzle, which is not ideal, you know, because you have 90 minutes limit at the competition, so I wouldn't finish it. But anyway, it's just the first puzzle of the lot, so I'm not gonna, you know, think about it too much because it looks like it's one of the hardest ones as well, because everything else is a lot brighter and it's got like more specific images. So yeah, I think it's time to move to the next one. The second one I did is by Ravensburger, and the title of this one is Saint Magdalena in the Mountains. Definitely one of the puzzles that I would never choose for myself, but you know, I said I have to get ready for the competition so anything goes because I don't know what I'm gonna get when I get there. But this puzzle, yeah, I just didn't like it. You know, that's all I can say really. One friend of mine that I exchanged puzzles with gave me a suggestion that when I tackled the portrait puzzles, I could even start with the top sections and then move further down. So then you never have to reach over. And somehow when it came to this puzzle, I actually did do that because somehow the easiest part of the puzzle is the top section anyway. So I kind of had no choice but to do that. And it was actually probably one of the most enjoyable assembly of the portrait puzzle because I never had to reach over. So that was quite cool but I had quite a bit of problems with lighting. So towards the end of the puzzle, it became really, really dark and I didn't even see the difference in the pieces anymore. So I have to say that if I had a bit longer daylight, I would probably finish this puzzle a little bit quicker. It took me 1 hour and 22 minutes to finish this puzzle, which is better than the last one, but still not ideal. And as I mentioned before, it got really, really dark when I was puzzling and I kind of managed to like correct the time lapse so it looks a bit better. But I wanted to show you how it actually was, like what the camera recorded. But I have to say that I was really happy when I finished this one because that meant that the hardest two puzzles are basically out. So then I can, you know, enjoy the others. The next puzzle I did is by Trefoe and the title of this one is Looney Tunes. I was really looking forward to putting this puzzle together because it's so bright and colourful and the image is so much fun. But I didn't really know how to tackle it because obviously it's got almost like five different images. So I couldn't really decide on the technique to use on this puzzle because I kind of wanted to do like sorting by picture. 
so it would make it a bit easier to assemble but then I did full flip and I don't know just eliminated the pieces and it was really difficult to know which pieces go into which picture there's not that much difference in the color so I'm quite glad I didn't decide to do sorting for this one So one hour and five minutes for this puzzle, which is, I think, a really good time compared to the last two puzzles, but still not under one hour. But I think I'm going to be quite happy with this time if I get anything like that at the competition. So I'm not going to complain. The next puzzle is by Puzzle Twist and the title of this one is A Squirrel's Life. I actually wasn't sure if it's a good idea to tackle this puzzle as a part of the video because it's a brand I've never done before and there's also something amiss. So I didn't know how much of the picture is actually gonna match the puzzle, so yeah. But I said I'm gonna do all 500 piece puzzles of my collection, so I kinda had to do it. So I'm gonna give you a little brand review as well. So when I opened the box and I saw how large the pieces are, I actually wanted to stop puzzling because I didn't know if that's a great idea to do in preparation for the worlds. But I already had it out and I said, you know what, let's just keep going. I said I'm gonna do all 500 piece puzzles. This is also a 500 piece puzzle, so I'm just gonna do it as well. So I kinda had to ignore the marks on the table for this one because I needed more space. And yeah, I forgot to mention I put those marks on the table because someone suggested it in the comments that I should mark it down how large the puzzling area at the competition is gonna be. So I basically limited my space. But for this puzzle, I decided I'm just going to completely ignore that because I know that the pieces at the competition are going to be smaller anyway. So I'm not going to need that much space. Doing this puzzle with the full flip method, I'm not sure that was the greatest idea I ever had because I was running out of space all the time and I even needed to bring my puzzle boards to put the pieces on because I literally couldn't put them anywhere else. But I'm quite happy I tackled the puzzle because it was an experience, especially doing it as speed puzzling. So 1 hour 36 for this puzzle, which is not ideal, but the fact that the pieces were larger and the picture didn't match, I can live with that. <laughs> so let me give you that teeny tiny puzzle brand review. I really liked it, like I'm not sure if all the pieces are that large, or maybe like the thousand piece puzzles have smaller pieces, so the actual end size of the puzzle is the same. I'm not sure how it works, I think I'm gonna have to find out when I do the other puzzles. But I really liked it and the quality is good, the shape of the pieces is quite unique. You know, I never had any misfits so I really enjoy it, I can say that the quality is definitely good. I really like the something's a miss part of this puzzle because there were points where I had literally no idea what I'm even putting together because some of the pictures are literally moved around. Some of the pictures just have like different background colour. Some of the pictures have different, I don't know, actual picture. <laughs> so I never knew what I'm gonna get. So that was definitely something that made me slower. And there's also an extra twist with this puzzle when it says if you can find Maynard. And I did. I did find it. I kind of knew where it was because it stood out when I was putting the puzzle together. The next puzzle I did is by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Yellow Bunch of Flowers. So yeah, I forgot a little bit about this puzzle, so this is the third worst puzzle of today's puzzles. But yeah, I think it's self-explanatory, it doesn't have a lot of colour, there's a little bit of greenery there, but it's basically like, I don't, I, I have nothing to say about this puzzle, I just didn't like it. So I decided to do full sort for this puzzle, because even though it doesn't have a lot of colours, it's got definitely chunks of colors within the puzzle so then it was easier to create sections of where some pieces go and obviously i started with the white napkin because it's the easiest part of the puzzle so i had to start there and then just make my way around it so i honestly thought it's gonna be a lot easier to see the difference in the texture for this puzzle but when i was doing the sorting i realized that i mixed up quite a lot of the pieces which made it a little bit more difficult but you know the picture itself is difficult anyway, so sorting or not, I never expected it to be easy.
I was actually surprised that I managed to finish this puzzle in 1 hour 17 minutes, but I think that's the Ravensburger part, because the picture definitely didn't help. But yeah, I cannot say that I enjoyed it, because I didn't. The next puzzle is by Educa, and the title of this one is Pebbles. I have to say that this puzzle is the one that I was looking forward to the most because it's just the colours, it's so bright, it's so colourful and also it has divided sections so I thought it's gonna be really easy and you know, let's see what happened. <laughs> I obviously had to start with the full sort technique because it is basically a gradient puzzle. Once I sorted all the pieces I decided I'm gonna start with the blue section and that purple and after I did the frame I realized that's only like two or three rows max per color and that was really interesting because for me it was like there's basically no pieces you know it, that should be so quick and I started doing it and then I moved on to the orange, the yellow and the green and they were so easy, it literally just flew by. And the red was difficult as I expected it to be because red is normally the most difficult part of the puzzle for me anyway in gradients. It just took so long, I didn't even realize how long it's taking me to finish the puzzle because I genuinely expected this to be one of the easiest puzzles and the one that's definitely gonna get me under one hour. So yeah, this puzzle definitely surprised me in a wrong way. So it took me 1 hour and 22 minutes to finish this puzzle, which is genuinely mind-blowing because, I don't know, there's this thing with gradient puzzles that I haven't done many. This is, I think, the third one and only one of them was like a normal gradient puzzle and that one was script. So it was completely different puzzle assembly as well, so I cannot really know how easy the gradient puzzles are. But from what people tell me, they should be the easiest puzzles, but these pebbles, like, Honestly, that was so difficult. What made this puzzle a little bit easier were literally the pebbles that had stuff written on them because then at least I knew something. You know, everything else was pretty much guessing. But then again, it's edgy cut and I don't really like the new cut because again, all ribbon grid cut pieces with like the non-interlock pieces in between. So that definitely doesn't help when putting a puzzle together, especially the one that doesn't have like a clear picture. The next puzzle is by Ravensburger and the title of this one is Lighthouse at Sunset. So I decided to invest in a new puzzle, so I bought myself this one to get ready for the competition. And honestly, it looks like one of the puzzles that might end up on the competition because it's got a lot of bright colors and, you know, sort of gradient. And I think when you get that, they want to make it enjoyable and, you know, somehow easy for you as well. I don't think they're gonna come out with like a black grip puzzle or something like that. So yeah, I decided to get this one because it was the only one that I actually wanted to do from what I had to choose from on the shelves in the store. So yeah, I was quite looking forward to tackling this one. For me it's always just the choice between the full flip or the full sort method because I tried the, you know, build as you sort and it didn't work for me at all. So I decided to do full flip method with this one and then just eliminating the pieces with, you know, the least colour, which is what I always do. I have to say that it was a really enjoyable assembly but I did kind of get stuck when doing like the sea and the rock section there. I had to shape swords in order to be quicker, so I wasn't really a fan of that because I kind of tried to avoid doing that because it takes time, you know. But still, at the end of the day, a really enjoyable puzzle. So it took me one hour and six minutes to finish this puzzle, which is not ideal, I somehow expected, because it's a new Ravensburger puzzle, it might put me under one hour mark. At the end of the day, it was still a very enjoyable puzzle and, you know, I kind of got used to the fact that I'm not gonna get under one hour when I go to the competition and I'm completely fine with that. It's finally time to tackle the puzzles from last year's competition, that's where we actually can compare the times. And I've obviously already done two, but I've done them with full flip methods, so I decided when I do them again, I'm gonna do them with full sort methods, because I want to figure out which method works best for me. I know it's like really difficult to figure that out, because when you do the same puzzle the second time around, you kind of become quicker anyway. So I did my best to try to figure that out, and you'll see at the end of the video. 
The first puzzle I did from the competition is called Floral Reflections. I have to say that I was really looking forward to doing this puzzle, but then after doing the Pebbles puzzle it kind of scared me, because I honestly thought like, oh it's not like doing a 500 piece puzzle, but it's doing 680 piece puzzles, you know? But after doing the Pebbles one I was like, nah, that's actually quite difficult. So I didn't really know how to feel about it anymore, it kinda, I kind of got intimidated by it. But the same as with the pebbles puzzle, I decided to go for full sort technique because I think that's the best thing you can do when you have like specific blocks of colors in the puzzle. I actually realized quite early on that it's really simple to do the water part of this puzzle. So every time I did the next section, I always started with the water first and then do the top with the flowers. Somehow I just really got stuck with the yellow and the green one because they're the brightest I automatically assume that they're gonna be the easiest as well, but there was not really that much to go from I'm starting to realize that it's really difficult to predict which parts of the puzzles are gonna be easy. So yeah interesting Another puzzle that got me under one hour and I finished it in 52 minutes and 41 seconds, which would place me on eighth place. How insane is that? Like with the last two puzzles I did, I ended up around like 20-ish place. So to be in top 10 now, like I know it's not the final puzzle, it's not the final round, but still eighth place. That's quite impressive. Like I'm impressed with myself right now, but yeah, no, that's quite cool. Honestly, like, yeah, I didn't expect that. Honestly, I didn't. The next puzzle I tackled is called Colourful London Townhouses. So this is the puzzle from the final round of the competition last year. So this one is going to be the true representation of where I stand. And I remember when I was watching the tapes from the competition, everyone started with the red door. So that's like the famous red door right there. So again with this puzzle, because it's got specific sections of colours, I decided to go for the full sort method but it wasn't really a good method I picked because there was a lot of white pieces and I completely forgot to eliminate the yellow house. I don't know how I managed to forget that. Obviously I had to start with the red door because that's just something you do, you know, when you have a specific color standing out like that. But after I did the purple house, I was like, where is the yellow pile? I was like, no yellow pile. <laughs> So I kind of like mixed it up with the white pieces as well because it wasn't really that clear of a gradient for me to know the difference. But I kind of managed to, you know, work my way around it. So I have to be really specific how long it took me because it depends on my place. So it took me one hour, three minutes and 50 seconds to finish this puzzle, which would basically place me on a 56th place. That's really bad. <laughs> I mean, it's not bad. There was a lot of participants, but basically doing the last puzzle that would place me eighth in the group and now going down to 56. But yeah, this is the one that really counts because it's basically all of the people together. So I would kind of want to say that I would be happy if I finish in the top 50, but I know that there's going to be a lot of strong people coming this year from like, you know, all over the world. So thinking about top 50 might be a bit of a stretch for me. So I don't know. I'm going to have to see when I get there, I guess. <laughs> the next puzzle that I did the second time around is my loyal friends. As I mentioned earlier, both of the puzzles I did with full flip method, so I decided I'm gonna do them with the full sort method this time. So I didn't really know what to expect when doing the same puzzle the second time around, but I sort of like knew that my time should get quicker, because when you're doing the same puzzle the second time around, you kind of learn about the puzzle as well, which makes it a lot easier because some details that you didn't know about them the first time around, you're more lenient to see them the second time around. And I think that showed even when I was doing the sorting, because I could see that my sorting was a lot more detailed so I think it definitely helped and that's probably going to improve my time as well. But the real question is not how much can I improve doing one puzzle, but rather what's the quickest way to do the puzzle for the first time. It took me 59 minutes to finish this puzzle, which is an improvement, but it's really tricky because I don't know if the improvement comes from the sorting or because I did the puzzle for the second time around. So I definitely think I'm gonna need more data. 
So the other puzzle that I caught for the second time around is called London Postcard. This is definitely my all-time favourite puzzle from last year's competition and also the first puzzle that got me under one hour mark, which makes it even more special. But the answer to the question of which technique is better is still unknown, so I think it's time to tackle the puzzle and see if it gets us closer to the answer. It was a bit tricky doing the sorting for this puzzle because I wasn't sure if I should go by like the obvious colours or if I should go by the little details. So I basically did a little bit of both. Everything that I remembered from the first time doing the puzzle I kind of used when doing the sorting for this one. So it was definitely more detailed and I think when putting the puzzle together it helped as well. It did take really long time to do the sorting though which is kind of like a wasted time because when you have really specific colours and you don't have to think a lot you're just throwing the pieces in each pile. But with this one because it's got so many details, so many specific colours, so many different sections it just took so much longer to do the sorting and then you have to think what's actually better. Okay, 52 minutes, <laughs> which is worse than the first time around. And that kind of puts me in a really strange situation because now I don't know. <laughs> so I'm really confused, like, is the sorting really that slow? Or is it just specifically for this puzzle? But I just couldn't let it slide. So I had to know for sure, sorting flipping. So I did the puzzle again and again and again and again. So I think doing the same puzzle six times, three times with full saw and three times with full flip, I think I now have a conclusion that for me the full flip method is better when it's for puzzles like this, that have a lot of colours all across the puzzles. Obviously if I get like a gradient puzzle or something like that, or like specific sections of colours, I'm gonna sort. But if I get a puzzle that a lot is happening all across the puzzle, I'm going for the full flip method, definitely. And I cannot believe that I'm going to say that, but after doing the puzzle for six times, I still have puzzle dust on my hands, on my table, and even now, I didn't know that's even possible, but it coloured my nail varnish and it's not coming off. So now I know how to make a blue nail varnish if I ever need one. So thank you, Ravensburger. <laughs> So I did all 11 puzzles in 13 hours and 8 minutes, which basically gives me an average of 1 hour and 11 minutes per puzzle. But if I add London postcards 4 more times, it basically puts me to 15 hours and 53 minutes for 15 puzzles, which basically puts the average down to 1 hour and 3 minutes. So this is going to be the last video out before Spain and it's actually going to come out when I'm going to... I think land in Spain, I'll be really close to landing in Spain, so that's gonna be quite cool. But yeah, I wanted to just note a few things before I go. So the next two videos are probably gonna be a bit more vloggy because I'm gonna try to combine all of like the footage from my phone of like meeting the girls and practice runs and all of that stuff. So that's, that's one thing. The second thing is for the first time, I'm gonna try to puzzle pairs. So literally when I finish recording, I'm going to my sister and we are going to be doing this puzzle. So yeah, wish me luck because I've never speed puzzled with anyone before and I kind of like want to see how it goes. I'm going to give you the time because when I do the editing, that's going to be already done. I just want to see how it's going to go. Honestly, I've never puzzled with anyone before, so that's going to be quite interesting. Like, do we do it side by side? Do we do it on the opposite side? Who's going to be up? Who's going to be down? Do we do the saw? Do we do the full flip? So yeah, there's a lot of things to consider. And apparently there's normally quite a lot of like elbow hitting and like hair involvement. So, yeah, we're gonna see how that goes. So, I just got a call about the t-shirts, they're ready for the competition. Ah, how exciting! 
so I hope they look nice, I'm gonna see them today. So the next thing I wanted to mention is that I did a membership on my channel, so if you want you can join and support me, you know, so I can create more content and obviously buy more puzzles, especially the huge puzzles, you know, the one with the really really large discount. So if you want you can join on the button below and become a puzzle friend and you also get some extra content. And then the last thing I wanted to say is I basically reached 2000 subscribers a few hours ago. So I wanted to thank every single one of you for being here and supporting me because it really means so much to me. And I know I said I'm gonna do like a 2000 piece puzzle when I get there, but the fact that Spain is happening and all of that is gonna have to wait until after Spain. So just bear with me. Wish me luck in Spain <laughs> because I'm definitely gonna need it and I'm gonna keep you updated. I'm gonna put stories on my Instagram if you wanna see what's happening with the travels and all of that. So, and obviously trying to do the vlog because I don't know how to do vlogs. So basically the next time you see me, I'm gonna be in Spain. So wish me luck. Bye.